Hello, everyone, and welcome to T-Rex Bites, where we give you little bites about what's happening in the T-Rex world. I'm Madeline, the Research and Development Manager for T-Rex, here with Mark, our Geospatial Program Director. Today, we're excited to bring you a conversation with Tom Seiler, the Executive Vice President of Seiler Instrument. Seiler is a contract manufacturing company specializing in high-precision machining and optical instrument assembly. In addition, Seiler is a distributor of surveying software instruments, microscopes, and planetarium equipment. Very cool. Seiler was founded in St. Louis in 1945 and is still headquartered here in Valley Park with additional geospatial sales offices in Indianapolis, Kansas City, Milwaukee, Omaha, Chicago, Detroit, and Lansing. Also, Seiler is um, a generous sponsor of T-Rex and the Geospatial Innovation Center, and Tom serves on our Geospatial Advisory Committee. So they've been very supportive of our efforts to grow the geospatial ecosystem in St. Louis. We're very excited to have Tom on the show today to talk more about the story of his family's business and his perspective on the geospatial industry in St. Louis. Tom, could you start by telling us a little more about Seiler? and your role there. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Madeline. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity today. Uh, so at Siler, we're uh, really excited and proud to be celebrating our 75th anniversary this fall. It'll probably be a virtual okay. event. We're probably gonna suspend the actual event. Um, so the roots of our company go back to the early 1900s in, uh, with Zeitz. Our grandfather uh, and founder, Eric Herman Siler, came from Jena, Germany, and he was an apprentice, and then at, at Zeiss, he earned his Master's of Fine Optics, which uh, was a big deal. It actually empowered him to not only build instruments and service them, but uh, the big deal was he could train others how to do it. He could train all of our employees how to uh, service and build uh, fine optical instruments. So uh, interestingly, even today, we still work with the apprenticeship method in our service and repair department, as well as in our machine shop and our assembly department. So nothing beats the apprentice method. You take somebody that doesn't know how to do it, and then you teach them the right way to do it, according to us. Our president and CEO is our brother, Rick Seiler. Uh, he runs the entire company and has since uh, 2008. Our sister, Louise Schaefer, is our compliance director, and she runs our Zeiss Planetariums business. And then uh, I guess throughout the pandemic, we've been really fortunate. All of our offices, including our headquarters, were able to remain open. And um, we got a letter two days after, after asking ourselves the question, is were we essential and critical? And the letter came from the DOD saying, yes, you're essential and critical and please stay open. And we've done so in our geospatial business as well. We're considered critical to the infrastructure of the uh, of the country, so both both big parts of the business are are needed to stay open. Yeah, and you are essential because you serve you serve the DoD basically. Right. Serve, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's great. And you're really a family operation there. All the right, systems right. are all um, running different parts. It's wonderful. So do you want me to explain what I do? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Good. So I'm executive vice president uh, in charge of our geospatial team. And uh, I'm really blessed with a really strong and technical and caring team, and especially the leaders and all the workers. And uh, I got the honor and privilege of leading them. And geospatial is really made up of four parts. Uh, the founding of the company was service and repair. And we do that to this day with about 10 or 11 people doing service and repair. And then the second piece is our survey solutions, which is mostly Trimble, which is uh, our biggest partner. And then third is the mapping and GIS solutions, and that's Trimble and Esri, uh, which are both business partners. And then the fourth piece we call Siler Design Solutions. It's comprised of the Autodesk business, the Siler Geodrones business, and finally the GeoSlam uh, indoor and outdoor mobile mapping. So it's a mouthful, wow. but we got lots of <laughs> technical partners. Lots of geospatial, it's awesome. We love yep. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Tom, so uh, my turn to jump in here. Um, so uh, I was fortunate enough to visit your headquarters out in Valley Park, and um, you've, we've talked a little bit about the geospatial um, 
perspective that you guys are working on and DOD. Uh, how diverse is the, the number of divisions and se sectors that you're working on? Thanks, Mark. So yeah, the divisions are pretty diverse, right? So planetariums is very specific. It's like selling Hubble Space Telescopes, it's very specific. Microscopes and medical is very specific to dental and medical professionals. Our military business is very specific. We mostly sell to the DOD and NATO forces. We sell howitzer and mortar sites and mounts. And then finally, geospatial, again, is very specific. The one common thread across the four divisions is optical and precision instruments. So every one of us sell items that have glass and metal and are, at the end of the day, they're precision optical instruments. And we get to see some of those instruments today in the background. Yeah. Absolutely, right. I got the antiques behind me and some of the newest stuff right behind me as well. Great. Yeah, very good. Hey, so uh, when I did visit out uh, at your Valley Park location, and you've described a little bit about how the family uh, is kind of in, in the, the leadership roles across the, the company. But when I visited there, I, I really got a sense of a family type atmosphere. Is that, is that a culture? Uh, that was intentionally developed at Siler, or is that something that kind of evolved um, with, uh, with a number of long-term employees that have built personal and professional relationships? Mark, thanks, that's a great question. Yeah, I would say we're very intentional about uh, treating our employee team members as part of the Siler and Shaper families. Uh, we do a couple things to try to uh, differentiate ourselves. We uh, have annual profit sharing, uh, depending on how big the profits are, it goes up and down quite a bit. Uh, we also help pay for our employees' uh, development, training, and we partially pay some of their college costs. And then uh, we take many of our associates on an annual team building and rewards trip, again, depending on how good a year we had. And then uh, the big thing, finally, is I think we treat our people and customers with the honor and respect that, uh, that they deserve. Yeah, very good. Good to be a part of an organization like that. Um, so one of the things that I was particularly fascinated with, and, and I'm glad Madeline um, identified it uh, earlier, um, was your museum quality pieces, microscopes, theodolites. Uh, how, how did you come to acquire all of those? Okay, thanks, Mark. So here the credit goes to our dad. Uh, he's actually 92 now, and uh, I don't think he's collecting as much as he used to but he actually worked at the company for 62 years. He was there at the founding in 1945. Uh, anyway, throughout his 62 year, uh, you know, era here, he collected a lot of instruments and uh, the common thread again is optics and it's mostly brass and steel. And you can see behind me, the brass is kind of the gold colored uh, instruments. And um, in front of me is an example of one of the older ones, the compass is what the compass survey instrument is what Lincoln, Washington, and Jefferson all used to survey with before they came presidents. So these are, are really nice and really old. And uh, they're, they're pretty rare. Wow, that's beautiful. And you guys have done some like kind of, or for surveying, you've done some pretty um, Im important uh, known projects here in the same, especially here in the St. Louis area that I know of, right? Like. You did the surveying for the arch, for example. Well, we, we provided the equipment, Madeline. Yep. You were, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. I always think that's such a neat story. So that's really cool about your dad um, collecting all of those. But what a great legacy, too. Yeah, we, look, we look forward to showcasing a few of those piece, pieces when we, uh, we build our uh, tech center yep. down here. Yeah, this is one of them right yeah. here. Oh, really? That's going to be yep. in the... Oh my gosh. That was perfect wow. spot for you guys. Oh, <laughs> great. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, and you know, Mark is all about the estate sales and everything. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. all right up his alley. I love it too. I was, I was history major, so I think it's interesting. So, Tom, Siler has been a big contributor to the geospatial community in St. Louis. You've also participated in a lot of our events, including Startup Week and Geosaurus Unleashed. Um, why is this important to your company to, you know, invest in the wider community and be involved? Okay, thanks, Madeline. We, uh, we really believe in giving back to the community and industry that's helped us grow and prosper so much. 
Um, and by the way, we have so much faith in the relevance and future growth of the Geospatial Innovation Resource Center at T-Rex and uh, you know, your guys' vision to become the global leader in the geospatial intelligence and excellence and expertise is just awesome. We really want to be a part of it. We're so excited to be a part with you guys. And, uh, and, and joining you guys in the meetings, we've always enjoyed the events that you guys host, including the monthly Geosource Unleashed programs, which have been fun and they have had excellent content. And let's not forget the cold beer, the free cold <laughs> beer, right? Anyway, at Siler, we also sponsor across the Midwest a, uh, a good deal of student survey scholarships. And it's at least 10 universities, most of them being in the upper Midwest and uh, I think eight alone in Wisconsin. So we're proud of that too, helping students go back and get their survey degree. That's great. That's really great. And do some of those students end up working for Siler later uh, on? Not usually. Usually they go to work for a survey company. Ah, okay. Okay, yep. great. That's well, great. We, we certainly uh, enjoy having Siler uh, down at our Geosaurus Unleashed events. I, I would say the only drawback is, is I have to get to the bar before anybody from Siler or else I get left. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. And the cheese balls, too. Yeah, and the cheese balls. <laughs> I wonder when we'll get to do that again. <laughs> um, so, so Tom, how, is, how is, have you guys been affected by COVID-19 um, in the pandemic? I mean, I know that you're still up and running, but everyone is still affected by it. And um, so, and how, what do you find yourselves doing differently right now? Okay, thanks, Madeline. So, I mean, the COVID-19 pandemic has certainly been the most challenging and unpredictable event in probably most of our lifetimes. Maybe my dad with World War II was bigger. But anyway, it's been challenging. And... Um, We've showed a lot of compassion and gratitude to our employee teams and our customer teams. I think we've had to be a lot more flexible in understanding, which we've done. And uh, we did institute emergency bonus pay for the workers that are required to be here, and, um, which is quite a few of them. Um, we have kept our workplace open, safe, and secure, and kept our operations going. Uh, we've adapted. The, the quickest thing we did is when this thing the CDC guidelines come out. We sent anybody that could work from home has been asked to do so. And all of the salespeople already had laptops and cell phones and MiFi's and everything else. So that part was easy. Some of the administrators and purchasing people, et cetera, et cetera, was a little bit harder, but we've done that. We have a good part of the people working from home. And then the people that are required to be here get a little bit of hazard or uh, emergency bonus pay. And then uh, a little bit further, you know, we're strictly following the CDC guidelines of six foot distancing. If we can't follow that, we are encouraging and making people wear masks, visitors and employees. So we've, uh, we're distributing masks now too. Okay, great. A, a little bit further, the risk is a really big deal. The economic uncertainty is really uh, affecting our, our commercial sides of the business, planetariums, medical micro and geospatial. There's no question. And then in manufacturing, we've got risk all over the place as well, supply chain risk, and even people being able to show up to work risk. There's a lot of people that have been really scared and, and for, for good reason, right? People are really concerned. The, the one other thing we're doing obviously, obviously is a lot of virtualized meetings, Zoom, go to meeting, and then we have something called VILT. It sounds like a German word, but it's an acronym for virtual instructor-led training. And we've been doing that thanks to Trimble for over a year now, and it works spectacular where you really virtualize one machine and then 20 or 100 students can work off that one virtualized desktop. So that's really been a blessing for us too. Oh, that's cool. The, yeah, technology has been really great in helping us navigate. Very all. helpful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's sometimes, yeah, it's, it's been, I don't know how, what we would do without virtual meetings now, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, Tom. So, um, you know, obviously a, a, a company that has been in business for as long as you have, have, have adapted along the way. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the adaptations that you've had to undergo in your business uh, in the past and kind of what you see as are some of the, the trends uh, in the future? 
Sure, one of the biggest adaptations we had to make was about uh, 40 years ago, we were still making instruments for what I would say is commercial construction and basic surveying. And what happened was, it was the Japanese competition came in and literally ate our lunch. And we had to do a pretty big pivot to go from making commercial survey instruments, which some of them are right behind me, and then we morphed into making military instruments for the military. And that is why now, you know, our manufacturing is, is probably 95% uh, defense and aerospace related. And then our geospatial business is an outgrowth of what we used to call our surveying division. We, we bought and sold survey instruments and that's grown into mapping and into, into drones and into imaging. It's really grown into the bigger geospatial pot. Very good. So, so where do you see the, the trends in the future? Is that, uh, and um, UAVs, is it you know, LIDAR systems? Or? Yeah, I got a, a DJI drone behind me, which uh, is called a Phantom 4 RTK. So it incorporates a drone, a video camera, and centimeter level RTK processing. So basically, you got a geo-referenced position at the drone. And uh, that's not an expensive drone. I think it's under 10K. But uh, so as a company, I'll give you a little bit of our, we envision Siler moving forward as a continue to be a closely held family business and really growing across the aerospace and defense business as a, as a medium-sized prime contractor where we're working directly for government. But the bigger push is gonna be, we're gonna be a significant strategic subcontractor to the mega primes, the great big, you know, the big defense contractors of the world. And then in the, in the geospatial segment, we see ourselves being a, the premier AEC, you know, architecture, engineering, and construction geospatial provider in the world. And uh, I guess the way we're gonna do that is build upon our 30 years with both Trimble and Autodesk. And uh, you know, we're really blessed to have Trimble and Autodesk are both California, USA-based companies, and both of them are top in the world. Trimble and Geospatial, they're the largest geospatial company on the planet, and then Autodesk is the largest design software company on the planet. So, you know, we can thank we signed up with them 30 years ago when they were both small. Yeah. And now they're not. Good move. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Yeah. So, Tom, did, did you want to show off any part of your workspace right now? Um, or sure. you know, show, tell us a little bit more about it? Okay, I'll grab my phone and I'm going to do a quick half a tour of the geospatial showroom here. And then I really want to show you the service department where, you know, they're not the most high run guys on the team, but I'm telling you, it's the most important part of our company because they service and repair almost everything that we sell. But I'll give you a real quick tour. Yeah, awesome. Yep. We haven't done this before on the podcast. No, this is a first. <laughs> we'll show it. Right? So I can, there's the museum pieces, right? Cool. <laughs> I gotta go this way. Uh, so here's our show survey stuff, GPS, robots, accessories. That's the microscope and medical department over there. Say hi, Sandra. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay. This is still just all our showroom. Wow. There's our Tim's card. We own two of those. That's an indoor mobile mapper. Construction, transits, levels, lasers, robots, total stations, Nikon more construction, lasers, pointers. And then I told you I'd go in the repair department. So we're gonna go in, can you see still? Yeah, 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 yeah. it's great. We're gonna enter the service department. This is where nine out of 10 people come when they come into the service and repair department. Joe Jersevic is our fearless leader. That say hi, Joe. Hello. <laughs> Robots, Kevin hey, Schaefer, Kevin. lasers, and Craig Morris, robot. Craig and Kevin combined have been here almost 80 years. So wow. in, in this room, we got over 100 years of uh, expertise. Don't and, let them uh, go. Yeah, these guys are the good. <laughs> and we even have an automated parts handler over here. Can you see that thing? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Parts in it. It's the repairs. Anyway, yeah, this is the best team that we got here. And we're super grateful. That's great. That's Thanks, fun. you guys. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. So that's, a that's a mobile tour, right? Yeah, very good. That was a, that was definitely a first. 
And I, I, hope, I hope I can get there in person one of these. Oh, you're days. welcome <laughs> anytime. Buy you lunch when you come out here. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Tom. I, I really do want to get over there. It sounds really cool. Um, and just thank you so much for, for agreeing to be on the show. And I think we had a great, awesome conversation. You guys do such um, awesome, interesting work and are so supportive of the St. Louis um, community. It's wonderful. Thanks, um, Pam. At Trimble Museum, that's 30 years of Trimble stuff. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's 30 years. We didn't sell all that, but we sold most of it. Yeah. Cool. And then, Mark, here's your pile of equipment. This whole area is all the stuff for uh, Geosaurus down there. Oh, wow, nice. Can't wait. So and there's a mosaic on the wall that our, our great-grandfather did and great-uncle, the Ravenna Mosaic Company, and it, they did the... Uh, Basilica Church, the new cathedral. Oh, they, wow. Really? They spent 62 years doing the mosaics in the cathedral. Two generations. Oh, yeah. That, it's quite a, <laughs> that was quite a feat to do. Yeah. I love That's it. Our, our family did that. Wonderful. All right, you guys. All right, Tom. So, uh, again, I wanted to uh, reiterate um, Madeline's thanks. Uh, for being on the show and your support for not only T-Rex, but um, the geospatial ecosystem uh, in the St. Louis region. I mean, it definitely makes a difference and we're proud to, to, to have you as, as part of our community. Uh, and obviously we look forward to uh, seeing you in person and yep. holding a beer with you uh, in, the, in the future. So stay safe, tell everybody out at Siler High for us and yep. we'll see you soon. Hey, Mark and Madeline, thanks a lot. Have a good day. Thanks. Thank you. you too. All right, Thank bye, you. guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of T-Rex Bites, where you can get little bites about what's happening in the T-Rex world. T-Rex is a nonprofit technology, innovation, and entrepreneur development center dedicated to strengthening the economic vitality of St. Louis. You can find future episodes at Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, or by checking us out at anchor.fm slash T-Rex Bytes. And you can learn more about the T-Rex Innovation Center by visiting us at downtowntrex.org. This episode was written, produced, and edited by T-Rex staff. Music provided by Shane Ivers at silvermansound.com. Cover art by Jocelyn Edwards. On behalf of the T-Rex team, I'm communications manager BJ Krayberg. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll catch you next episode.